Welcome back to our program called Prepare to Meet Thy God. This is a program that we have made in order for us to truly understand what is written in the scriptures and for us to prepare a right for the soon coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now in this second part of the FAQ, we will be tackling the same three questions that need to be answered through the Holy Scriptures. Now, for the first question that we will read, the question is, shouldn't we keep Sunday holy in honor of the resurrection? Now, let us remember that everything that God has established, Satan will strive to destroy. In the heavenly courts, when there was a spiritual war between Satan and his armies and God with his armies, Satan strikes directly against the foundation of God's government in heaven and here on earth, and that rebellion caused him to be expelled from heaven. After he rebelled in order to save himself, he wished God to change his law, but was told before the whole heavenly host that God's law was unalterable or immutable, ineffaceable. Satan knows that if he can cause others to violate God's law, he has gained them to his cause, for every transgressor must die and pay the price of sin. Satan decided to go still further. He told his angels that some would be so jealous of God's law that they could not be caught in the snare. The Ten Commandments were so plain that many would believe that they were still binding, and therefore he must seek to corrupt only one of the commandments. He then led on his representatives in this world to attempt to change the fourth or the Sabbath commandment, thus altering the only one of the Ten Commandments which brings to view the true God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Satan presented before them the glorious resurrection of Jesus. This is what the deception is right now. And told them that by his rising on the first day of the week, he changed the Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day of the week. Thus, Satan used the resurrection to serve his purpose. He and his angels rejoiced that the errors they had prepared took so well with the professed friends of Christ. What one looked upon with religious horror in the worship of another day instead of the Sabbath, another would receive gladly. Thus, different errors were received and defended with zeal, with the will of God so plainly revealed in his word was covered up with errors and traditions which have been taught as the commandments of God. Although this heaven-daring deception will be suffered to be carried on until the close of time, even until the second appearing of Jesus, yet through all this time of error and deception, God has not been left without witness. Amid the darkness and persecution of the church, there have always been true and faithful ones who kept all of God's commandments. That is why despite the efforts to destroy the law of God, practiced by many, the law and the true day of worship is still kept and secured by the hands of God through his people who love his law. And the entity that has used the satanic reasoning we can find in the book called The Faith Explained, page 246. It says there, The reason for changing the Lord's Day from Saturday to Sunday lies in the fact that to the Christian church, the first day of the week had been made doubly holy. It is the day in which Jesus conquered sin and death by his resurrection from the dead to give assurance of our future glory. That goes to say that if you are in sincerity asking the same question, my brethren, then God's answer, if we should worship on the day of resurrection, which is Sunday, is no. He claims worship only on the Sabbath day. And that is the answer to the question. Now, the second question is, isn't the law and the Sabbath only given to Moses and for the Israelites? Now, to answer that question, that is false. The written form of the law of God in the form of the two tables of stone written by God himself and the book written by the hands of Moses were a written form of the law of God. However, God commanded his creation to worship on the Sabbath day beginning from the first week of creation. As the words of God were taught to the first inhabitants of this world and passed on by the word of mouth from Adam and Eve until the next generations, it was given to the people in the time of Moses, having written in the tables of stone. That is why, as the symbol of God's authority and the embodiment of his will, there was delivered to Moses a copy of the Decalogue 
engraved by the finger of God himself upon the two tables of stone. The patriarchs and the prophets that were predecessors of Moses were keepers of the laws and were found faithful to the obedience to the law of God, such as Abraham, which we can read in the book of Genesis chapter 26, verse 5, which says there, Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Now, looking further ahead, the law that was committed to the ancient Israel in which the Jews have kept were presented the same to us. Let us read in the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. It says there, What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. This was the precious committing of the law of God to the hands of the Jews, left for them to keep and to preach to the world. However, as we have known or we have understood and studied this law, that it was supposed to be the hedge against sin or the barrier against sin was made to become the hedge and the barrier against the people, making a wall of partition between the Gentile and the Jews. But God teaches us that in Romans chapter 2, verse 28 and 29, he says there, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And uncircumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Now, additionally, it says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 12, it adds, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. And in Romans chapter 3, verse 29, it says to us, declaring, Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Meaning to say, my brethren, that the law of God, which was first given to his people, Israel, according to Psalms chapter 147, verse 19, was not meant for them to keep alone, but for the whole of humanity to keep and obey, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, saying there, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So, it is the same with the salvation that God ministers to everyone. That is why it is called the common salvation. It means universal salvation, or it is for all. And it is the same law that God will use to judge all the people in the world, whereby those who keep the laws of God will be the ones who will have the right to receive the promise of eternal life. So, no, it was not limited or made exclusive to the time of Moses, or it was for Israel or for the Jews only to keep alone. But it was for the whole world, each and every one of us, and so long as we live, we are under obligation to obey the law of God out of love to our Creator. So that was the answer to the question, if the law was exclusively for the time of Moses and even the Israelites. To recap, it is for everyone to keep, so long as we are God's creation, and we are under obligation to obey and keep His commandments out of love to Him, which is our Lord and Savior. Now the next question is, now the next question is, the law, even the Sabbath, has already been abolished by the time that Christ was nailed to the cross, taking it away according to Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 to 16. Now that was the question, but if you continue in verse 17 of the same book, it says there, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Meaning to say, my brethren, there was a form of Sabbath that was considered as a shadow of the things to come. And that was the law that was erased by the time that Christ has fulfilled the prophecy of the Sabbaths and those laws that pointed to the coming of the Messiah. That is why Christ said in the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 44, saying there, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms, concerning me. We read that prophetic Sabbath and that law that prophesied to the coming of Christ in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 2 verse 4. It reads there, Behold, I build an house to the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to him and to burn before him sweet incense, and for the continual showbread 
and for the burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths, and on the new moons, and on the solemn feasts of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance for ever to Israel. So, to explain, the law that was abolished during the time that Christ was nailed to the cross bearing our sins are the feasts and the ceremonial laws, or the ceremonial Sabbaths and the festival Sabbaths. Even the temple wherein resides the prophecies and the object lessons that God used to show to the people the prophecy of the soon coming Messiah was abolished during the time that Christ was crucified. And because the message that they bore is no longer needed by the time that the Messiah himself fulfilled his mission in this world to be the greatest sacrifice in order to redeem our fallen race, it was also the time for them to perish for the prophecy has met its fulfillment, and the type has met its antitype in the antitypical day of atonement. And that is the answer to the question, if the law of the Sabbath was already abolished during the time that Christ died in the cross. The Sabbath, or the true Sabbath, the seventh-day Sabbath, or the Sabbath of rest, which is a weekly Sabbath, remained and still continues and will continue until the end of time. But that prophetic Sabbath, which points to the ceremonial laws and their festivals, Those were the things that prophesied Christ in his coming and were the ones that were abolished during the time that Christ was nailed to the cross because it was pointing to him. And those are the questions that we have given answers through the Holy Scriptures where God explains to us the truth about the Sabbath and the proper instruction in keeping the Sabbath. Now, if you have any questions or queries or comments, make sure to comment down below and we will come back to your questions in the succeeding FAQs that we will be making in order to answer and address those inquiries of yours. This has been Prepare to Meet Thy God, and may God's blessing be upon you.